Another episode of Life Support. It's great to have your company. Yes, welcome to the only lifestyle show that makes all the important decisions about your life for you. Because we're the experienced experts. And you're not. So settle back and relax while I teach you some tricks so you too can scam the man and make your life just that little bit easier. Or at the very least, bearable. On tonight's show, I'll be heading into the kitchen and teaching you how to cook an exotic, tasty treat. Oh, Todd, your DIY talents know no bounds. Well, that's right, Sigourney. With Todd's tips, the right tools, half a brain and a bit of luck, there's nothing on this planet you can't do yourself. And later in the show, I'll be introducing clueless parents and cloistered kids to a new band that puts the real shock into shock rock. And I'll have more invaluable health advice. I'll be revealing the medical secret behind successful weight loss with a program you can all follow at home. We'll all be looking forward to that one, Dr. Rudy. It's a big show, so let's get started. We all know how some fabulous fabric and simple sewing can cover up those everyday nasties and make our lives at home so much nicer. Well, here's a smart idea for the modern woman. Let's liberate our lady of the cistern by using this fun and easy technique to hide all those ugly essentials our men folk, bless them, just have to have around the house. It's effective, it's feminine, and a real buzz to know that your taste is adding to the aesthetics of wherever you go. Since the Paralympics, most of us have at least one friend who's disabled. But this can be a bit of a problem when you introduce your new friend to others. To avoid embarrassing everyone, simply conceal attention-grabbing disabilities to prevent those awkward moments. Being disabled never looked so fashionable. Children can be so cruel to one another, especially when someone's a little different. Well, you've guessed it. With some careful measurements and a weekend sewing, you can create an enviable playground play cover that Siamese twins can timeshare for an almost normal life. Just make sure they get equal time to avoid any sibling rivalry. It really is very satisfying to know that your elder classes can make a difference to a child's life. And it's fun. I'll be back later in the show with more ideas, so stay with us. Nothing impresses women or intimidates your mates like a bookshelf heaving under the weight of literary classics. But why waste shelf space on books you know you'll never read? Well, don't worry. There is a way to look bookish without taking up too much room. Simply rip the pages out from these old leather-bound books and use the covers as casings for your favourite videos. For instance... On the outside, this may look like a first edition of Love in the Time of Cholera, but pop it open and we find Police Academy 5, Assignment Miami Beach, a real classic. And this complete works of William Shakespeare holds the entire Porky's trilogy nicely. Alas, poor Pee Wee, I knew him well. Friends will fear your intellect and respect your opinions while you can enjoy Steinbeck's Caddyshack or Tolstoy's Toy Story. Now in the movies, just as good as the book. You know, there are like 
heaps of things moulding the formative minds of young kids. And you parents need to know what these things are. So tonight on Child Watch, we'll be looking at music and one band in particular to see what effect they could be having on your kids. New alternative band Chamber Mouth are a melancholy three-piece of depressive rock Known for their deconstructive bass lines and sombre tone, the most distinctive aspect of this Gosford trio are the vocal stylings of singer Nick Howell. You see, Nick is like so totally depressed, he constantly has a shotgun in his mouth, not only providing the band with its distinctive sound, but bleak and for many fans, irresistible image. So what you want to know is, is this the self-expression of a fragile and tortured artistic genius, or simply just another gimmick to secure the lucrative teenage dollar? But most importantly, what effect is it having on your kids? That's what music is, it's artistic expression. You want to put a gun in his mouth, you want to put anything in his mouth, I'll listen to it if it's good. Yeah, I've heard of it, but I'm not quite interested in that kind of music. Mate, I've liked him since the beginning. When he used to sing with sleeping pills in his mouth and that, that was cool. Kurt Cobain, Nirvana. He might not have like a good voice or they might not be a famous band. That's the way to attract attention and that. Nick, thanks for like talking to me. It's totally an honour knowing that I could be the last person that you ever speak to. Oh. 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 Okay, Nick. Uh, do you like think that you have a responsibility to provide a more positive image to teenagers? Oh, oh, oh. Well, that's understandable, but parents hear their kids playing your depressing albums, they see your posters on their bedroom walls. Don't you think that gives them reason to be concerned about their kids? Yeah, sure, but if it's the parents' responsibility and they ban their kids from listening to your music, isn't that just making it all the more attractive? Okay. Nick's firm belief that parents should take some responsibility and interest in their kids' lives does sound outlandish. But we talked to one mother who couldn't agree more. So you're, like, totally cool with your son's obsession with this band? Oh, yes. There's nothing wrong with a bit of idol worshipping. It's all about them finding their own identity. You don't think this could represent something a little more dire? <laughs> oh, goodness gracious, no. I mean, the safety's on. It's just a bit of fun. I mean, his father wore makeup like Alice Cooper when he was a boy. He grew out of it, eventually. See, there you go. Nothing for you parents to worry about. And though times have changed, it's still just good old rock and roll. In years to come, Nick's shotgun will look about as menacing as Bill Haley's kiss curl or Marilyn Manson's contact lenses. And hey, after all, take a look at Mama Cass's sandwich and John Denver's ultralight. Young people today, they have such strange taste in music. What do you mean, young people? You're not that much older yourself, Sigourney. Not older, Todd. Just more mature. All right, so if chamber mouth isn't your thing, what type of music do you like, Sigourney? Well, I listen to a mixture of blues, folk and pop, mainly Celine Dion. Really? Oh, yes. Not only does she have a six-octave range, but she gave up an international singing career to have a baby with her husband, and I find that inspirational. Speaking of inspiration, why don't we check out Life Support's source of inspiration, the viewer's mailbag. What a good idea. We've received lots of letters this week. Isn't it wonderful to think that the art of letter writing is still with us? This one's from Laszlo of Armadale. Dear Life Support, he writes, I've spent the last two years living in concrete dust and paint fumes while renovating my home. Good on you, Laszlo. Now it's finished and I'm about to sell it at auction. What tricks can I use to increase its value? Well, Laszlo, you're in luck. Because in this next segment, Dr Rudy will be using his years of medical training and experience to reveal a secret tip that is guaranteed to boost your auction price. That's right. More advice that you won't find on any other lifestyle show. OK. So you've finished your renovations and your house is ready for auction. Many people say for maximum impact you should put on a pot of coffee or even bake some fresh bread. But Dr Rudy's got an even better technique for maximising your price. 
That's right, Sigourney. Before your auction open day, go out and buy one of these. This is testosterone and it's available in several varieties in the back room of your local bodybuilding gym. Simply pour your testosterone into one of these garden sprayers and give the house a good going over. Now just sit back and let nature go to work. 185 is a bit now, 185, thank you. 190. At 190 now, sir, with you. 300. 300. At 300. 400. 400. 400 the bit. 800. 800,000. Ladies and gentlemen, we're past our reserve. This property will be sold today. Ah, oh, shut up. 1 million. What? 1 million. 2 million. 2 million dollars. I million. have 2 million dollars <laughs> over here. And it's against you, sir. Going. Going. Gone. We all look better by candlelight. Did you know that lighting is the seventh most important factor in looking beautiful? Right behind breeding, cosmetics, fashion, grooming, corrective surgery and regular use of moisturiser. Which is why it's always a worry when you're going to a dinner date at his house and you have no idea what the lighting will be like. This is serious stuff. I mean, it could be neon. But there's no need to panic. There is something you can do to take control of the situation. This is the electricity substation that sends the power to Bryan Street. What are you going to do to the substation today, Penny? I'm going to start a fire, an electrical fire, so it looks like shoddy maintenance was the cause. That way, some comfortable government employer gets the blame, not me. Thanks, Penny. Wow. Sigourney, you uh, look beautiful. Thank you. Look, uh, there's been a bit of a blackout. So would you mind just waiting while I dash to grab some more candles? Oh, no need. I brought my own. Wow. If you came across a motor accident, would you know what to do? In other words, do you know first aid? These days, first aid is actually quite easy to learn. Here's all you need to know. The first thing is that mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation is a complete no-no. Just look at that slobber. You could catch something. And what about heart massage? Well, if they can't breathe, they're going to die anyway, so there's no point. In fact, don't touch them at all. If you aggravate a spinal injury, they'll take you to court. Remember, people in wheelchairs get sympathy from juries. Dead people don't. So, in short, unless you're a trained professional like me, the best first aid is no aid at all. But if you are actually first on the scene, you should wait until the ambulance arrives. Which means the best thing in your first aid kit is a good book. Read the accident victim a bit of Harry Potter. You'll both enjoy that. It was a typical day at Hogwarts School for Magic and Incantation. It's amazing how much money you can get for an athlete's autograph by selling it on eBay. Some freak chucks a ball at 150 kilometres per hour and all of a sudden their name written on a piece of paper is worth a lot of money. And they know it, so they're reluctant to sign for just anyone. But I know a guaranteed way to get that signature. Find yourself an eight-year-old child. This is my cousin Peter and I'm going to shave his head. Then, for added authenticity, give his eyes those dark rings and a haunted glaze by making him stay up all night watching horror movies. There you go. Even the most cold-hearted, girlfriend-beating, poo-smearing rugby league player will stop to give Peter an autograph now. Remember, look pathetic. A genuine autograph worth a lot of money and without actually breaking the law. And remember, before you let your little friend's hair grow back, make sure you've contacted a charitable organisation and told them it's your cousin's dying wish to visit Disneyland. They always pay for the chaperone. Come on, Pete, let's go to the doctor and see if we can score some medicinal marijuana.
Thanks to you, Penny. Penny will be back with more great advice later in the show. But right now, we'd like to invite all of you at home to write in and tell us about your problems. That's right. If you've got yourself stuck on a problem or you simply want some advice about your life, why not write in and tell us about it? Just send your letters to Life Support, Locked Bag 028, Crow's Nest 1585. But right now, here's Todd talking pets. We all know that keeping pets can be great. They're educational for the kiddies and they provide company for the lonely and emotionally starved. However, feeding pets can be expensive, but not when you have an exotic species like the axolotl or Mexican walking fish. You see, these little fellas have a unique ability. If they lose an extremity like a foot or a tail, it actually grows back. So simply feed your axolotl its own feet. Careful rotation will provide you with a fully recyclable, well-nourished pet. Now, this may look like Top Tucker, but take a tip from Todd. Because he's eating himself, there's a chance he'll get mad axolotl disease. So it's probably not a good idea to share meals with him. I guarantee you'll enjoy a lifelong, frugal friendship with a Mexican um, limping fish. For today's modern woman, there's nothing like spending some quality time in an isolation tank. The silence, the stillness, and the consoling maternal caresses of the undulating water. But, if you're anything like me, after about five minutes, you've pretty much found your spiritual centre and start to get bored. So, I've got some effective techniques to make your floating rituals so much more enjoyable. A Walkman is a must for the serious isolationist. Music really helps you pass the time. Personally, I recommend someone like Madonna, a good songwriter, so you can concentrate on the lyrics. Unwinding inside the womb-like domain can be a thirsty business. And I find Capri Oscar the perfect cocktail to ease those mental biorhythms. And if there's room, why not invite a friend to come along so you've got someone to talk to. It's so much more enjoyable to experience the beauty of isolation together. Did you know that one in ten Australians are clinically obese and that a half of those one in ten are women? But it's a fact of life that when a man is fat, he's not necessarily unattractive. Think of Marlon Brando, Gerard Depardieu, Mikey Robbins. Whereas chubby chicks are nothing but a turn off. Think of Roseanne, Rosie O'Donnell, Cameron Mannheim. I get so many dumpy darlings coming to my surgery and asking me, Dr. Rudy, how can I lose weight? And I said to them, I have a 100% guaranteed weight loss regime. It always works. Everyone who has ever tried this regime has lost weight. What is it? What is it, Dr. Rudy, they say? I said to them, it's very simple. All you have to do is eat less. Two words, eat less. That's all you need to know about weight loss. Eat less, I guarantee you'll lose weight. It worked in Chengi, it worked for Gandhi. No love handles on that man. But remember, eating less will not work unless you actually eat less. So there you go, girls. Run along and try that at home. If run, you can. Bana. I don't eat all day, and then in the end, I eat. And then she makes herself sick. And then I throw up. A lot of overweight people, they can be a lot fitter or healthier than some skinny, uh, you know, junkies. Take a lot of speed. <laughs> Taking copious amounts of amphetamines. <laughs> Just um, not eat <laughs> for days, you know, starve yourself. Eat less. It sounds so simple. Does it really work, Dr. Rudy? It really works. But you don't have to worry about losing weight, Sigourney. Not more than a couple of kilos, anyway. You're being cheeky, Dr. Rudy. 
Anyway, we should stop talking about weight loss because we here at Life Support believe in a healthy diet. That's right, Sigourney. And speaking of a healthy diet, here's Todd in the kitchen to show you how to whip up an exotic, tasty treat. Todd in the kitchen. I've been waiting for this all week. Now, you've probably seen some of these little fellas popping up around the place. They're Vietnamese spring rolls, and they're delicious, and they're dead easy to make. Here's a recipe that anyone can follow. Now, these rolls are made from thin sheets of rice paper dried on bamboo mats. They're called ban trang, and you find them in Asian food stores. But to save you the hassle, we're going to use some white bread instead. Now, the rolls are filled with a mixture of pork, prawn, vermicelli noodles, coriander and carrot. But you know, an equally good substitute is a tin of Tom Piper braised steak and veggies. Spring rolls are traditionally deep fried in a wok, but you can use any cooking utensil lying around, like this one. And there you have it, Vietnamese spring rolls. And don't forget the special spicy dipping sauce. As they used to say in Vietnam, bon appetit. Char goi, one tin of Tom Piper braised steak and veg, one loaf of tip top white bread, and one squeeze pack of fountain tomato sauce. We've done some wonderful things today. We've improved people's lives, proving what I always say that handicrafts can be more than just relaxation. And the most important thing when covering up those unpleasant realities is that you're only limited by your imagination. OK, Sigourney, I'm ready when you are. Thanks, Todd. Isn't it wonderful to think that with a little thought and some fabulous fabric, we can brighten up our own lives while giving something back to the community? Oh, it sure is, Sigourney. <laughs> See, we can make a difference, can't we, girls? That was a top cover-up idea, Sigourney. Thanks, Todd, and thanks for your help, mate. Well, we find ourselves at the end of another episode. Yes, the end of our second episode. As good a reason as any to bake a strudel. So much for eating this. So make sure you tune in next week when I'll be taking you through the finer points of foreplay. Todd, my friend, you in the bedroom. Yeah, don't miss it, Rudy. It might be Todd's topest tip. Also on next week's show, I'll be telling you how to become the hottest musician in your matrix without ever having to learn how to play a single instrument. And I'll be teaching you how to decorate using a paint technique that's been around for thousands of years. A fresh and fabulous designer look for a fraction of the price. Until then, you watch out for one another, you hear? And keep sending in those questions because the only reason we're in here is because you're out there. Good night, Australia. Thank you.